I just played my whole footy career and I've got nothing left. And it, and it was a horrible, horrible situation. I'm Alex McKinnon, this is Transitions. I could have chatted to Shane Webke for hours. Shane's transition out of rugby league was one which was quite tough and he faced many challenges. But when he clearly identified his end goal, he found the pieces to the puzzle to get to where he needed to go to. Webby, you've been retired around 10 years now. Can you take us on that journey and some of the roles that you've played to get you where you are now? Well, I'll summarise it, because there's been plenty, yep. like all things in life, and it was, a, it was a work in progress. But the long and short of it is, is I made some really, really crook business decisions toward the end of my uh, footy career. And I remember about six months after I retired, I was actually technically bankrupt. That shaped the whole, so, so I, I had to look and think, I've just played my whole footy career and I've got nothing left. And, and it was a horrible, horrible situation. And, and amongst trying to deal with everything, that just compounded it. And so I was in a, I was in a pretty bad spot. But the good thing about playing footy for the Bronx, full stop, but also having a black like Wayne Bennett, I knew how to lean into the wind and go to work. A combination of those two things. I had a role with Channel 7, I was sort of half dicking around with it. But at that point when I realised I've, I've got to rescue myself here, well then I went to work on it. With my transition is, I was dealing with something else. I wasn't even depressed or down living with a spinal cord injury. It was the fact that I wasn't around my teammates yeah. and I wasn't in their routine. Yeah. I think that was the, the hardest thing. Like I was dealing with changed morning routines and yeah. ability to eat and drive and all these other complications. And that wasn't the thing that was yeah. the burden to me. It was, I was able to get on top of them yeah. things pretty quickly. Yeah. It was all the other things that I was not which be able to be which highlights to me how very real it is, mate, because you're dealing with something that's changing you for the rest of your life, and yet the lack of that routine that you got used to and being with your mates and the expectations and playing sport, uh, what you're saying is override that. And that tells me, mate, how powerful it is. I do remember vividly when I was in the middle of playing footy and, and coming toward the end, I didn't think any of this was going to happen. I just And I actually thought... I. Maybe trick myself into thinking, well, I'm still in touch with the real world because I still had all my old mates and, and uh, you know, I was from a rural background and so I used to go back to farm all the time. But you're not, you're not in the real world. The real world doesn't operate like a, like a sporting franchise. I had no perspective at all. No. And, and you don't, eh? Just none. Or I can take them and used to laugh at me with how limited my perspective was. And That's because we were living in a bubble, mate. And you, you only realise that once you're out of it. And, you, and I really used to think, you know, I'm pretty level-headed, and I am a level-headed sort of person, but, I, you know, I'm in touch with what the, the real man's going through in, in the world. Pig's ass. you got no idea. And, and the, the challenge for us and the challenge that I've been through and you, you've been through is that getting into that world and, and realising what it's all about again. And it, it, it's, that, it just, it's just a bit of time. The connection between myself and you is Wayne. One of the memories of Wayne in myself, which I think of not daily, but sometimes, and yeah. how much he means to me, is that when I first got injured, I come off the field and was under the stadium at Amy Park in Melbourne, and I was crying because I felt like I'd let him down. And I, I wasn't, I was obviously thinking about Tegan and my family on the field, but when I first come off the field and saw Wayne, I continually repeated to him that I'd let him down because I felt like that I wouldn't be able to play rugby league anymore and achieve the things that we wanted to achieve together. Yeah. And even saying it now, I still get emotional thinking about that moment. Can you describe Wayne's help to you or guidance to you as a player and also through that transition period? But I'll tell you what he did for me. My father was killed when I was 19 and I'd just started here. Yep. And my dad made a hell of a lot to me and he was killed in a workplace accident. I was a maybe, maybe here. And I, I mean, I was a long way from being anything at this club. Yeah. When my dad was killed, and I'm from a little country town, uh, three hours west of Brisbane. I come from a very, very humble family. And, and, and we, had, we were a farming family, but we were poor and we were this and that. So we didn't have a lot, but, but it was, we had a great family. I felt my, my world had collapsed. And that we had no control over anything. He's there when we went and gone the next, ripped away. And it just, it just was, it was horrible. 
on the day Dad's funeral, I don't remember much of it, but there was a massive crowd there because he'd been killed in, in an accident and, and so a lot of people had come and little church was full. And we were carrying him out um, as Paul Bear, as my brother and I. I looked over on the side of the hill and there's this big tall fella and it was Wayne. People, when I say that, people say, well, you, you were part of the Broncos, of course you'd be there. Mate, I was part of like a group of hundreds of young boys who, who might have made it at the club. And so on a day where we thought Dad was insignificant in so much that he'd just been wiped off the face of this planet like that, Wayne being there changed the way that we thought about it, mate. And I get goosebumps talking about this. It made us feel like our dad was important because Wayne Bennett came to his funeral. Now, he didn't do it for that reason, no. but that's what it did for me. It had nothing to do with football and everything to do with that he's a decent man. And mate, I've never forgotten that, and I'll never forget, because you can tell someone you care about them, but until you show them you do, you, you actually don't. And him doing that, mate, he, that agendered in me an affection, number one, but number two, a loyalty that could never be broken. That man could tell me to do anything, mate, and I'd do it. And then I got back and he helped me with footy, and, and mate, he'd been like a second father to me. No one replaces my dad, but he has been a very, very close friend to me. And I go to him with anything, and I still do, and I always will. Wayne's obviously a man of not many words. That's just him, and you, that's, you need to deal with that. But Wayne definitely speaks through actions. Mm. And I think as a coach and a person, that's how he wants you to speak as well. Mm. Wayne Bennett, of course, who, who said to me, he said, mate, you've got, you've got to change the way you think about this stuff. If you turn up to that job, because I was lost, with the same attitude that you used to come training with, apply that to your job and see what happens. Well, that day, that very day that he told me that, and I'd been telling him I didn't want to read, I went up and I told the news director, I'm reading a sport tonight. And he looked at me and said, what? I said, I'm reading it tonight, mate. And I went out there and that red light went on, and that was almost, the red light on and you know that you're on air, right? And you know that there's, you know, however many people watching. It almost felt like when that whistle blew again. And that, and that, was, a, that was a light bulb moment for me. So I got better at reading the news. So that extended my life within that job. But of course, that kept me in the public eye. And that meant that my public speaking side of things, people started to ask me about that. Started a little bit of stuff on radio uh, with Triple M for footy. And mate, I was forced in. I, I, I didn't have the luxury, if you like, I didn't have a nice mapped out plan because I'd actually stuffed it all up. And I'm not embarrassed about that, it happened. And you know, it happens to plenty of people. I just had the great good fortune to have a good job like I had at Channel 7 but then also to have a bloke like Wayne to tell me to pull my head out of my ass and just get into it.